200 and 300 MHz. Advantage for the illegal user, listening or even transmitting, the expenses of for antennas, receivers or the transceivers are extreme low. Mike introduced in the last show of Dr. Dish TV a very costly but also very effective antenna made for the US military for the use on the UHF follow-on satellites. Between 300 and 400 euro is the price tag and in some cases an export license is needed which would be another 60 euro. Here we introduce now a low-cost alternative of such an antenna. With our here shown linear antennas we have to expect some less gain but also we save quite an amount of money compared with the better work cross Yagi of the military version. The task to find a suitable cheap antenna is an easy one. A wideband log periodical antenna was discovered at the company Satforce in Salzburg, Austria. Meant to be a DVB-T antenna, it served our needs and with a price tag of 30 euro we could not resist. To compare this antenna with a smaller range antenna we bought from Astron in the USA the three element Jagi model 140 minus 3 for 70 US dollar. The log periodical antenna came ready to use. Even the F connector was there. The Astron had to be made ready to receive the band between 200 and 300 megahertz. The passive and active elements had to be cut in the right size and mounted on the boom with the correct distance between the elements. Without the drilling machine, one should not start with the Astron antenna. As carrier for the two antennas, with a precise motor control, we used a small offset antenna with the famous stub motor. A long tube was mounted horizontal in the back of the dish and both antennas were installed on each end of the tube and adjusted to the desired south elevation of 37 degree according to the geographical location. Relevant satellite positions for Europe are 34 degree west and 6 degree east for Skynet, 16 degree east for Seacrell and 15 degree west for the UHF follow-on. This position data can be easily stored in the users menu of your satellite receiver and the stop motor will find the position right on the spot with accuracy of 0.1 degree. In most cases the positions are already used by normal communication satellites and the click on the remote control of the satellite receiver turns the antenna to the desired position. For viewers outside Europe it is the same easy. You just need the positions of military satellites for your region. Easy to find in the search engines of the internet using the keywords fleetsat.com and UHF follow on. If you do not have any success to obtain this data, just send an email to drdish at drdish-tv.com with the subject position. The range of suitable receivers goes from about 150 to thousands of euros. It could be even a cheap handheld radio scanner as long he covers the frequency range from 200 to 300 MHz and works in FM mode. Expensive software and computers are not needed, because we will not try to decode the data channels. What we further need are some cables and a cheap wideband amplifier, which you may obtain in each electronic or the TV shop. Here in our test we did use an indoor amplifier, which is not the best solution, because not only the signal is amplified, but also the cable noise. In the ideal case, one uses an outdoor amplifier mounted directly on the antenna with a very short cable. For a first test we turned our antenna to a UHF follow-on satellite. Analog communication is rare these days on the satellites but in a military conflict we will detect quite a lot of analog signals. Most communication is an ANDVT. In such a case the voice communication is hidden inside a digital noise. In order to find a UHF follow-on satellite, we should adjust our receiver to the frequency 250.550 MHz. On this frequency, a data stream in PSK is transmitted day and night. In mode single sideband SSB, we will hear some loud noise. In FM mode, the signal level rises clearly and we hear the noise with a lower level. In order to obey the law, we will not listen into military communication here, but we have a look on some strange signals coming from these satellites.
on 261.800 MHz, sometimes we are able to listen to Radio Maria, and on 254.100 MHz to Radio Colón de Colombia. No, the Radio Maria transmission is not coming right from heaven, but as is the case with Radio Colón and others, it is an unwanted interference produced by the broadcaster. The broadcaster sends his radio signal wireless in the same frequency band from the studio to the transmitter outside the city. On rainy days the ground works as a reflector and the signal goes up to the satellite. This was the first proof made by the Dr. Dish team years ago that these military satellites are not safe at all against illegal use. On 261.700 MHz we observe telephone communication from an Asian country, probably in Indonesia and the Russian military playing around in the frequency range between 266.800 to 266.900 MHz. Two very special signals you may listen on 260.530 MHz plus minus 5 kHz. Here we have the Eldorado of mainly Brazilian but also European pirates using fleet satcom or the UHF follow-on satellite as their own free of charge telephone. And since many fa Italian families emigrated generations ago to South America, but still with intact strings to the former homeland, they have to contact their loved ones in Italy and there is no better and cheaper way than using US military satellites also on 260.530 MHz and if this frequency is engaged then they move to 260.525 MHz Is the financial effort not too heavy for such a transmitting and receiving site? Not at all. The beginner will start with just one antenna and the professionals are using two antennas. This enables the illegal user to transmit in full duplex. This means talking on both sides like on the normal phone without pressing a button. One antenna is used for transmitting, the other one for receiving. The transmit-receive device can be a converted ham radio transceiver or a mix from ready-to-use equipment and homemade stuff. Very common is a small handheld transceiver with an output of just some milliwatts. The antenna output is connected to a transverter, which transfers the incoming signal to a frequency above the receiving frequency and amplifies the signal on the end to roughly 8 watts. As a receiver, a normal radio scanner is used. The danger to be discovered by local authorities seems to be very low. First of all, these people transmit with low power and secondly, the signal is directed up to the satellite. Furthermore, the authorities in some countries are closing both eyes. And what is the military doing to avoid this illegal use? Years ago, Dr. Dish TV made the situation public. The US Department of Defense said, this was in the old days of Litsatcom, that the new UHF follow-on satellites would be secure. Now, these satellites are in use and still be used by pirates. At the time the US military were searching Saddam Hussein's cellar for weapons of mass destruction, a single electronic weapon, in this case a very powerful FM transmitter, would be enough to kill the whole military communication. Luck for the US that dictators usually are not equipped with a lot of fantasy. Another secure satellite system is stationed on 16 degree east, the Italian Sicral. Around 252.00 MHz, it is used mainly by the Italian Navy. Here we are able to hear military communication in clear voice because the analog mode is still in use. The same if it's the British Skynet. Are these satellites secured against illegal use? No. Also from here we got reports of illegal radio traffic. As the big ones in this world decided to build up the Echelon system to spy on nearly everyone, even to interfere in our, into our private life, they forgot their targets could hit back and listen into their so secret communications. Now, on the end, this disclaimer has to follow. All information provided here are clearly for educational purpose. In no case you should try to do the same. It could be against the law in your country with the exception for people living in Mulvania or Tierra Abajo. Mm -hmm.